Astros have won the American League pennant. Milwaukee, you have a World Series. Thousands of people streaming on to the field at County Stadium. It is absolute pandemonium. Welcome to a new series on the channel where we talk about different historical ballparks for different teams. First off, I have to give credit to Bright Sun Films. He does videos on businesses and buildings that have been abandoned or bankrupt. He does an incredible job and that's where I got this idea from. Milwaukee County Stadium was originally built from Milwaukee Brewers, not the current ones, the ones out of the American Association, a minor league baseball league that was mostly centered around AAA. That league survived all the way up until 1997. County Stadium was built to replace outdated Bort Church Field. Bort Church Field was used for Milwaukee Bears, a team from the Negro Leagues, the Milwaukee Chicks from the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League, and even the Green Bay Packers put a game there in 1933. Overall, the field would suffer from water damage and the roof was torn off by strong gusts of winds which would send debris into houses near the ballpark and hurt some fans attending the game. As you can tell, it wasn't really a high quality ballpark. Also, Milwaukee was hoping to attract a major league club to Milwaukee, hence Milwaukee County Stadium being built. Milwaukee County Stadium was the first ballpark in the United States paid by public funds. They started building it in 1950 and completed it early in 1953. The ballpark costs $5.9 million to build, $63.9 million in 2022, which is still pretty cheap considering Globe Life Field, the newest ballpark, costs $1.2 billion. The St. Louis Browns, currently the Baltimore Orioles, who started out in Milwaukee as Milwaukee Brewers in 1901, applied to be the newest major league team in Milwaukee. But the Boston Braves, who were the major league affiliate of the Milwaukee Brewers minor league team at the time, who were rumored to be looking for a new home for years, blocked the Browns from moving there. Then a few weeks before open day, the Boston Braves got approval from the other National League owners to relocate to Milwaukee as the Milwaukee Braves. Milwaukee had a major league baseball team yet again. The people of Milwaukee were more than excited to have a major league team yet again, and they showed it by having an NL record of 1.8 million fans come to Milwaukee County Stadium that season. Brave fans got to watch future Hall of Famers Eddie Matthews, who had an incredible second season leading the league in OPS Plus and home runs with 47, also starring pitcher Warren Spahn, who led the league in wins, ERA, ERA Plus, FIP, and WHIP. And if you want to see your favorite players and future Hall of Famers play in person, then you can go to SeatGeek, find your tickets to any sporting event you want or almost anything that requires a ticket, go to the checkout and enter promo code BREWPACK, exactly where my channel name is spelled. Even if your team sucks, you cannot beat a day at the ballpark. It wasn't just the fans who were excited. The players played some of the best seasons there too. The 1953 Milwaukee Braves finished 92-62-3, which was still 13 games behind the Duke Snyder and Jackie Robinson led Brooklyn Dodgers. Then in 1954, they got this new player named Henry Aaron. Not sure if you guys have heard of him, but his career turned out kind of okay. It's 7-15. There's a new home run champion of all time, and it's Henry Aaron. Also, 1954, the stadium was on the cover of the first ever Sports Illustrated magazine. On the cover was Eddie Matthews with Milwaukee County Stadium in the background, glowing under the lights. In 1955, the two-year-old stadium was chosen to host the 1955 MLB All-Star Game, the 22nd of its kind. Braves players Eddie Matthews and Hank Aaron would represent their team in it, while Stan Musial would go on to hit a walk-off home run in the bottom of the 12th to give the National League the 6-3 win. If people weren't aware of the Milwaukee County Stadium before, this one definitely put them on the map. The fifth year of the ballpark's existence gave the city of Milwaukee and the people of Wisconsin one of the greatest years of their lives. For the fifth straight year, the Braves finished with the best attendance in the National League. A team led by MVP winner Hank Aaron in a walk-off home run to win the Braves the pennant. Aaron, a swing and a drive back into center field, going back towards the wall, home run! The Braves are the champions of the National League! Holy cow! They are carrying him! Milwaukee County Stadium would be hosting the 1957 World Series. In a World Series matchup against the historic New York Yankees, the Braves had to pull off an upset against a team with four future Hall of Famers, including Whitey Ford, Mickey Mantle, Enos Slaughter, and Yogi Berra. Milwaukee would go 2-1 at County Stadium and won Game 7 at Yankee Stadium 5-0. And the Milwaukee Braves are the new world champions with a 5-0 victory. The next season, they'd go on to win the pin again, and yet again, they face the Yankees. The Yankees have made the World Series a lot, guys. This time, the Braves would get a 3-1 series lead, but would lose the final three games, including the final two in County Stadium. Even with the loss, Milwaukee County Stadium was in the spotlight back-to-back -back seasons. In 1959, the Braves finally weren't first in attendance in the National League. This wasn't the start of the collapse of County Stadium or anything. The Los Angeles Dodgers were just two years into their move from Brooklyn. But by the time the 1960s rolled around, attendance dropped more and more. The Braves were never bad during that time. They just weren't good enough to compete for another World Series. 
During the 1965 season, the Braves finished with a total attendance of 555,584 fans, which was dead last in the National League. With new owners who were seeking a larger television market and more fans to show up, decided to move the team to Atlanta. Milwaukee County Stadium was without a home team and Milwaukee was without a Major League Baseball team eight years removed from a World Series title. And the Milwaukee Braves are the new world champions. During the years before another MLB team would play Milwaukee, the Green Bay Packers would play games in County Stadium, and County Stadium would also play a factor in the Lambeau Field existing. As I mentioned, the main purpose of County Stadium was for a Major League Baseball team, which is what it was used for for the first 13 seasons of its existence. It was also made to get the Packers play Milwaukee full-time, instead of a couple games a year as they had been playing before, including a 1939 NFL Championship game against the New York Giants. Milwaukee County Stadium was twice the size of the Packers' then home, called City Stadium. The Packers played Milwaukee to help draw more fans, but threats were made by a league to relocate the Packers permanently to Milwaukee, which caused the team to replace City Stadium with New City Stadium, which is now called Lambeau Field. After the Braves left for Atlanta, up until there was a new MLB team that took over, which we'll get to, the Packers played 13 games there where they went 9-4, including the last playoff game ever played there in a 28-7 win over the Los Angeles Rams. Every game was a sellout. It didn't matter where the Packers were playing. Packer fans would show up to watch their team. We'll talk more about the Packers a little bit later. Bud Selig, who was a local businessman and small owner in the Braves at the time, wanted MLB games played at the stadium, even if it wasn't permanent. The Chicago White Sox would play in an exhibition game there, and it drew more than 51,000 fans to the ballpark. With that number being so high, Selig would contact the White Sox about playing nine more games at the ballpark during the 1968 season. They said yes. And in those nine games, County Stadium saw 264,297 fans walk through the gate. And in the other 72 home games for the White Sox in Chicago, they only drew 539,478 fans. Selig and the White Sox would do the same thing again in 1969. What also happened that season was an MLB expansion, one that would give us the Kansas City Royals, the San Diego Padres, Montreal Expos, and the Seattle Pilots. One of these might not sound as familiar as the others, but it's the most important for the video. The Royals and the Padres are of course still here today, and the Expos are now the Nationals. The Seattle Pilots had many issues during 1969 season though. Sixth Stadium was extremely outdated. They made an agreement to expand to 30,000 seats before their home opener, but only 19,500 were available for that day. Water pressure at the stadium would be horrible when more than a few fans showed up, and they finished the season with 677,944 fans showing up, which was fourth worst in all of baseball. It was obvious the Seattle Pilots were not meant to be, so their ownership would secretly meet with car salesman and former minority owner of the Milwaukee Braves, Bud Selig, without anyone else knowing. Selig would buy the Pilots for $10.8 million with plans to move the franchise to Milwaukee. But this didn't become official until only six days for opening day in 1970, so Selig couldn't switch the navy blue and red color way he wanted to, to honor the old Milwaukee Brewers minor league team that he watched as a kid. Instead, they were forced to use the old Pilots uniforms with a name switch, which is why their jerseys look so familiar. Earlier. Regardless, Milwaukee Brewers were born and their home ballpark would be Milwaukee County Stadium. The Brewers weren't the greatest team throughout their first four years, but 1975 gave the stadium some new life as it would host its second All-Star game, this one being the 46th of its kind. Our host is the American League Milwaukee Brewers, as NBC Sports presents the 1975 All-Star game. Representing the hometown team would be future Hall of Famer Hank Aaron in his second to last season. Outfielder Hank Aaron. and first baseman George Scott, who was one of the more underrated defensive players of his time, when eight gold gloves. First baseman, George Scott. He led the league in home runs that season with 36 and would finish eighth in AL MVP voting. And just like that 1955 All-Star game, the National League would win 6-3. Although it's all I've mentioned so far, the stadium wasn't just used for sports. Also in 1975, Milwaukee County Stadium held its first concert, the Rolling Stones. Then two weeks later, Pink Floyd, other artists like Fleetwood Mac, The Eagles, Paul McCartney, Billy Joel, and Elton John also performed there during its time. But back to sports, the Brewers as a team weren't good that 1975 season and continued to have their troubles until their first season above 500 in 1978. They would follow that up with two more above 500 seasons, but unfortunately for them, they would miss the postseason in all three of those seasons. Going quickly back to 1976, arguably the greatest player of all time, Hank Aaron, would play his final game there as he picked up two hits as the Brewers would lose 5-2 against the Tigers. In 1981, Milwaukee County Stadium would see playoff baseball for the first time since Milwaukee Braves lost the World Series back in 1958. They would go up against the, at the time, 22-time World Series champions, the New York Yankees, who were just involved in three straight World Series three years ago. 
the most historic franchise in sports against a team making their first playoff appearance 12 years into their franchise. The first two games were in Milwaukee. The Brewers would go on to lose the first two and go deep into a 2-0 hole. The Brewers would come back and tie the series 2-2 in New York. In the series to sign game five, which was also in New York, the Brewers would take an early 2-0 lead, but would eventually lose the game seventh and in their first playoff appearance, but they'd build on this. The 1982 Brewers are usually looked at the greatest team in franchise history, as Milwaukee County Stadium would see some of the greatest moments it has ever seen. They go on to win the AL East the final day of the season in Baltimore. They have won the American League Eastern Division Championship for 1982. Just like 1981, the Brewers would lose the first two games, but this time the next three games would be in Milwaukee. Game three of the 1982 American League Championship Series would be the first Milwaukee playoff win at Milwaukee County Stadium since the late 50s with the Braves. Game four would have the Brewers winning, sign up a series to sign game five at Milwaukee County Stadium, and the winner would go on to the World Series. California would take an early 3-1 lead with Ben Ogilvie hitting a solo shot to make it 3-2, and it would stay that way until the seventh inning. If you want to get a good pitch to hit, or if they're going to let you walk to first, do it. Left field, base hit, tied run, Moore comes to score, Gettner on his way to the plate, throw through, Brewers lead. With now a 4-3 lead heading to the top of the ninth, they were three outs away from Milwaukee's first pennant in 25 seasons. The one-two pitch, ball line to Yount, it's short, he throws, it's over! The Brewers have won the American League pennant! Milwaukee, you have a World Series! Thousands of people streaming on to the field at County Stadium, and they now go to the World Series! Absolutely fabulous! The Brewers will win two of the three games at Milwaukee County Stadium, giving them a 3-2 lead in the World Series. But a blowout loss in Game 6 and a blown 3-1 lead in Game 7 resulted in this. To the plate, a swing and a miss, and that's the winner! A World Series winner for the Cardinals! The stadium now was 1-2 and two in its home team's World Series and would never see another played there. After 1982, the Brewers had some respectable seasons, including starting the 1987 season 13-0, which include two of the most memorable moments in Brewers history. Here's the pitch. A curveball! Through the deep left! Can it get way, way, way out of here? And gone for dear! And they have tied it at four! Wow, whoa! Pitch, a swing and a fly ball! Right field and deep! Get up! Get up and get out of here! Gone! for Swain, and they've done it again! 12 in a row on a two-run blast by Swain to win it! Oh my goodness! Holy cow! Do you believe it? Ripken on first with two outs in the ninth. The Brewers lead 7 to nothing. Hit in the air. Yount makes a great catch and Juan Diemus has thrown the first no-hitter in Milwaukee Brewer history. What else can happen to this team? But overall, no season was good enough to make the playoffs again. In 1988, the stadium was chosen to be in the movie Major League. The movie would star Bob Uecker and was about the Cleveland Indians, even though it was shot in Milwaukee. Also that same season, WWE would host WrestleFest there, with the headliner being Hulk Hogan taking down Andre the Giant. 1990 would host the US Nationals men's team in an international friendly versus East Germany. They would lose 2-1. By the early 1990s, Milwaukee County Stadium was extremely outdated compared to other MLB ballparks. It just lacked the more basic stuff like box seats. It was also the only stadium with a monochrome scoreboard. Even with the stadium being outdated, it still had some nice moments. In 1993, Robin Yount would record his 3,000th hit against the Cleveland Indians, becoming just his 17th player in MLB history to reach that milestone. 1994 would be the last season that the Packers would play in Milwaukee, and their last game was a memorable one. The throw. Touchdown, Green Bay! What a way to leave Milwaukee. The last ever game here at County Stadium. Or say goodbye to the city of Milwaukee with one of the most thrilling games. With the Packers gone and the Brewers struggling to even reach 500, Bud Selig realized it was time for a new ballpark in Milwaukee. They start to break ground in 1996 in a new ballpark, which was already going to be named Miller Park. 
The plan was for 1999 to be the stadium's last season before they would move into the new one. After a tragic accident involving the death of three construction workers while trying to install a 400 ton roof panel, it would set back the opening of the new Miller Park for 2001 and the last season of Milwaukee County Stadium in 2000. The hometown Brewers would finish 1998, 28 games back of first. 1999, 22 and a half games back. And the final season of the ballpark, 22 games back. Even with no playoff hopes in sight, September 28, 2000, the final day of the stadium was still a special day for the people of Milwaukee. Hall of Famer and one of the best pitchers of the 50s and 60s, Warren Spahn, would throw out the last first pitch of the stadium to his old battery mate, Del Crandall. The recently retired at the time Brewers legend Robin Yount, other Brewers legends like Raleigh Fingers, World Series MVP Paul Molitor, and at the current time home run champ Hank Aaron were also all in attendance. Also, former Packer players who played at the stadium like Fuzzy Thornston, Willie Wood, and plenty more. But the Brewers disappointed all those legends and the other 56,000 plus in attendance, the largest crowd in the stadium's history, losing 8-1 to one to the Reds. The amount of fans were more than double and sometimes even triple the amount of fans that show up to the stadium that season. Even though the game and season was over, the Brewers had a closing ceremony, removing both the home plate and pitching rubber. Both would go on to the field at Miller Park. After the game, the 40 Brewers, Braves, and Packers legends would come onto the field with Robin Yount coming out on his Harley Davidson, replicating what he did in 1982. But only one person was worthy of the closing speech. Of course, Mr. Baseball himself, Bob Uecker. One thing remains. A bond between heroes and fans. And an ambition to succeed. It was here that boys became men. Men became champions. And champions became legends. It's time to say goodbye. We will never forget you for what was will always be. So long, old friend, and good night, everybody. The lights were turned off, and that was it for Milwaukee County Stadium. The stadium was demolished on February 21st, 2001. But even though the stadium was gone, there was still plenty of stuff left around Miller Park, now American Family Field, to honor the old ballpark. Hellfair Field, a youth ballpark outside American Family Field. The infield is laid out in almost the same way Milwaukee County Stadium's infield was, but smaller dimensions. You can still find the exact location of home plate of the old stadium outside that field. There's another plaque on the parking lot where Hank Aaron's final home run ball landed, so that Milwaukee will always be able to remember the once legendary Milwaukee County Stadium. With the current Brewers coming off four straight playoff seasons and Milwaukee Bucks coming off a world championship in 2021, the city of Milwaukee and its fans are excited as they can be. Now it's just time for the Brewers to do what they can never do at Milwaukee County Stadium, nor Miller Park, nor American Family Field so far. Win a World Series. That's it for the hopefully this future series on the channel, but only if you guys show your support for this by leaving a like and let me know down in the comments what you thought about it. I really hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.